Yo, free vote! Free vote! Breaking now at 11, peaceful protests marred by acts of violence. Stores ransacked, fires set as police struggle to gain control of the chaos on New York City streets. And we are just about seconds away from the city's 11 o'clock curfew taking effect. But as you can see, the damage is already done. It could be too little too late. Police describing what we've seen tonight, calling it organized mayhem. Peaceful protests. And then this, it escalated into near riots. We'll take you to live pictures from Chopper 4 showing the police response in Midtown. Live pictures, 34th Street and 7th Avenue, NYPD surrounding Macy's, where moments ago looters reportedly tried to set fires inside the store. We understand more than 200 people are already in custody. Police are now expecting to surpass last night's arrest. We want to get straight out to News Force Chris Glorioso kicking off our team coverage tonight live in Midtown. Tell us what you've been seeing tonight, Chris. Well, we are live on Broadway between 50th and 49th streets. This is, of course, some of the most famous Manhattan real estate, and it's also where we've seen some of the most blatant looting. This is a Dwayne Reed pharmacy store. We saw people go in and out of this store basically all evening, sometimes with police on the block. You can actually see where people have essentially indiscriminately pulled things off the shelves. And then if you come down here, you see another storefront, the glass bashed in here. Not clear if anyone stole anything or if this was simply out of frustration and anger. You know, at a certain point tonight, as we followed these protests throughout Manhattan, snaking down one street and up another street, we began to get the sense that this was no longer really a political protest or a protest about a movement. In many instances, the people that we were with did not want us, did not want our cameras there. In one case, we actually saw people uh, carrying uh, suitcases with them, which uh, suggested to us that they were here to steal. You can see in this case, they've scrawled pig blood on this CVS drugstore window. And then if you come down here, you're going to see on this very same block, once again, this store was looted. You can still hear the alarms. You know, this was really a case, I think, where police simply could not be everywhere at once. One of the, the most extreme examples of looting is at a Best Buy in Midtown. I want you to take a listen and a look at what happened there. Free vote! Free vote! This is, of course, video of people stealing phones, stealing electronics, grabbing really anything they can, and even stores that were boarded up they were not necessarily safe. I also want to show you video of a luxury watch store where people actually ripped plywood off themselves and then went inside. Take a look. Now, there were times when people were able, excuse me, there were times when police were able to make arrests, although they couldn't be everywhere at once. At one point in time, we were actually outside of an AT&T store that got broken into, and we saw police actually inside with two suspects, and those suspects began to struggle with police even while they were being detained inside that AT&T store. Uh, this really appeared to be a case where, uh, although there was extra manpower on the streets tonight, uh, Police could not be everywhere at once. We watched at one point on 51st Street. Uh, there were a, a, a march, a protest going up 51st Street, but police uh, essentially told everyone very calmly that they would be arrested if they did not leave the street. Of course, they did not leave the street, and then they really had the one mass arrest event that we saw all night. Must have been dozens of people or more arrested. At one point tonight, I was able to talk to someone who went into that Best Buy that was looted, and I asked him the simple question, why is it that you went inside? Listen to what he had to say. What did you see people taking inside that Best Buy? Everything, hoverboards, uh, Xboxes, headphones, TV mouses, phones, uh, anything you, you could Does say. that have anything to do with protesting George Floyd's death? No, no it doesn't. Why were people doing it? Because, you know, people are angry, and people think that because since everybody's going crazy, we, we could do that. Now, I want to underscore that 
For most of the day, we were traveling with protesters who had a political message, a social message, a message about police violence, and many of them are very distraught tonight to see scenes like this muddy the waters with regard to that message. We even saw members of the NYPD in solidarity with those folks out there who were saying that what happened in Minnesota should have never happened, and they went through a laundry list of other grievances. But again, as the dark came down upon this city, uh, things really took a turn. We could really feel that as we were marching through the streets with what was left over from that protest. And as you can see, uh, even right now, we continue to hear police sirens throughout this part of Manhattan. And I'm sure it's happening throughout the city right now. A very depressing night for New Yorkers. For now, reporting live, Chris Glorioso, News 4, New York. All right, Chris, thank you. Important to reiterate, it's now 5 after, about 5 after 11, so the curfew is now in, in effect. And we do have evidence of more looting and property damage in lower Manhattan to tell you about. That's where News Force Gabi Acevedo continues tonight's team coverage. Gabi, what have you seen there? As soon as night fell, chaos, looting, vandalism, and mayhem started. This after peaceful rallies that took place on the Lower East Side and around Lower Manhattan earlier today. Take a look at that footage from Soho just before 8.30 p.m. A group of a couple dozen people smashing windows, kicking down doors and ransacking stores. You can see that shattered glass, that group seen here on video, taking off with merchandise from cell phone stores and other retail stores in the Soho area. We also saw a band of 15 to 20 teenagers on 10th Street and 2nd Avenue. A very young group of kids lifting a metal gate that was protecting a liquor store, going inside the liquor store, and then looting the place, running away with the bounty, an impressive scene. That specific group of looters was moving very quickly around the Lower East Side of Manhattan, hitting at least seven different spots, and then running to the next side in a span of 20 minutes. We saw them stealing bicycles from random people in the streets, pushing and shoving civilians, and even lighting fires inside trash cans very, very close to the 10th precinct in Manhattan. It is important to mention that there was no police presence close to these scenes and that the group of vandals seems to have a system of lookouts that alert those rushing to smash windows and steal merchandise when law enforcement is coming. It was a surprisingly very organized criminal activity, that system that they implemented with lookouts and people in scooters and, and, and in bicycles trying to alert those that are, do, that are causing mayhem. Now, people, civilians, regular residents passing by this looting scenes were very scared. What they did was run away as soon as they saw what was happening and try to get somewhere close to safety. It was a very, very scary sequence of events between 8 p.m. and 10 p.m. around Lower Manhattan. Reporting live close to the Brooklyn Bridge, Gabi Acevedo, News 4 New York. Okay, Gabi, thank you very much. You mentioned the Brooklyn Bridge there. Some of those protests that started in Manhattan later spilled into Brooklyn. That's where we find News 4's Ray Vieta to continue our team coverage. Uh, Ray, give us a sense of the situation where you are now. Stefan, we're on the corner of Atlantic and Franklin Avenue. I want to walk you through this right here. Take a look. You can see hundreds of protesters are here, but I got to tell you, it has been peaceful throughout the entire night. We started following them at Barclays Center, and then we moved our way towards Prospect Park, Grand Army Plaza. Then we went on to Eastern Parkway, turned on to Utica Avenue. All of these protesters got in front of the 77th Precinct, but everything was peaceful. Still, they continue to disperse in groups. You can see them behind me here as well. But I got to tell you, everything we've seen was peaceful. The message has been cohesive, and you can see it, in fact, in the signs that have been in the background with how, behind me. I'm trying to speak here, but you can see there are a lot of people. They're very spirited. But I got to tell you, despite all that we've seen in Manhattan here in Brooklyn, the protests have been peaceful, and you can just see the sea of people. Again, as Natalie has mentioned throughout the newscast, 11 o'clock, that's when the curfew was supposed to go in place. You can see these folks are still out here, and they're not happy about the curfew, as you can see here with the profanity, the dirt bikes. This has been the scene pretty much throughout the night. Again, we started at Barclays Center, went up towards Prospect Park, 
We turned onto Eastern Parkway, then onto Utica Avenue. Police were basically guiding these protesters, making sure they were carrying out their mission to have their voices heard peacefully. And we have to tell you, we didn't see anything, anything really that was too scary. I did see two people throw bottles. And I got to tell you, protesters told them, stop doing that. That's not what this protest is about. What this protest is about is peaceful, a peaceful protest, sir, which is, do you want to, do you want to say anything? Every time someone throws something, there's uh, 10 times as many people saying, don't do that. Don't exactly. Throw. That's what I was just telling them I witnessed. They actually chased the people that did that away from the protest scene. This was around Grand Army Plaza. So again, the story here in Brooklyn as we head towards the Barclays Center is a peaceful protest. Hundreds of protesters have gathered. Right now we're on Atlantic Avenue, and if you know Brooklyn, it's usually pretty busy. Take a look. It is at a standstill. The only people out here are on bikes and walking. Traffic up there in the distance. The Barclays Center is up there. But you can see here at the intersection of Franklin and Atlantic, a large group of people protesting peacefully, getting their message out there. Despite the looting we've seen in Manhattan, happy to report things are peaceful here in Brooklyn. Stefan, I'll send it back to you. Okay, Ray, thank you very much. Uh, All right. Thanks, Ray. We'll take it from here. We appreciate it. And, and like you said, definitely a much different scene than what we saw just a little bit ago in Midtown. All right, let's talk about the FBI joining the NYPD in the search for the people who attacked police with Molotov cocktails. In the meantime, those already caught appeared in court today. And it comes as new video surfaces showing what led an officer to pull a gun on protesters. Chief investigative reporter Jonathan Deanst is live in the newsroom with more on this. John. Natalie, one day after defending the NYPD for showing restraint, the mayor today singled out one cop to lose his badge. This after a video surface showing that officer with his gun out in a crowd. But no one saw what happened right before that until now. This was the video that greatly concerned the mayor. To pull a gun in the middle of a crowd, knowing that there are peaceful protesters in that crowd, that is unacceptable. That is dangerous. But moments earlier, this. A police lieutenant attacked a brick hurled to the back of his head. This full video was not seen before the mayor spoke. Amid the chaos, the suspect disappears into the crowd. And the officer is then seen pulling out his weapon and pointing it in several directions. The head of the lieutenant's union says he supports the peaceful protests, but not this violence and not what he said was the mayor's rush to judgment. I had a lieutenant almost, almost killed last night, and he's making determinations. He's wrong. He has to wait, let the determination come out, and then we deal with it. The NYPD says there are other troubling videos under investigation, like that patrol car being pelted and then driving into a crowd, or this woman seen being shoved to the ground in Brooklyn. They should apologize. Others took a much stronger position. I am here to call for their immediate removal. The Brooklyn DA. I support the protests that are happening in our city. Says his office is already looking into allegations against some officers as well as prosecuting protesters who turn violent. I believe there are people out there who are really fighting for the right things, fighting for anti-racism, and there are other people who have other motivations. In federal court, these two lawyers appeared as accused arsonists. Colleen Ford Mattis and Uruj Rahman charged with driving around Brooklyn trying to throw Molotov cocktails at police. Also charged, Samantha Shaker, allegedly seen here throwing a device. Police released video of others allegedly firebombing vehicles, as well as the images of two women seen defacing the walls of St. Patrick's with spray paint. As for that brick attack video, we are told the lieutenant is hospitalized with head injuries. The mayor's office not saying if the new video changes the mayor's view on the incident. This as there are reports tonight of more officers being targeted. One example, an officer in Manhattan on a scooter was apparently attacked by a splinter group of marchers. Police officials very concerned. Lives are in the balance with so many projectiles and Molotov cocktails being used. In the newsroom, Jonathan Deanst, News 4. Jonathan, thank you. Now, as we mentioned off the top of the newscast, New York City currently under that citywide curfew. This will last until 5 a.m. It does not include essential workers who have to travel to or from work or who are currently on the job. The city also doubled its police presence with a specific focus on lower Manhattan and downtown Brooklyn. And that is in response to violence and property damage like this that you see here. It broke out in those areas during last night's protests. 
Tomorrow's curfew takes effect three hours earlier. It will start at 8 p.m. Well, President Trump says he will use U.S. military troops to put down violent protests if city and state officials don't establish what he called an overwhelming presence by police. That's right, Natalie. The president spoke this evening at the White House saying troops would be deployed under a 213-year-old law called the Insurrection Act. A law that was actually invoked last time back in 1992 in response to the Rodney King riots in Los Angeles. I am mobilizing all available federal resources, civilian and military, to stop the rioting and looting, to end the destruction and arson, and to protect the rights of law-abiding Americans. After this evening's remarks in the Rose Garden, the president walked a short distance to St. John's Church, which was vandalized over the weekend. He stood outside the church holding up a Bible and said America would come back greater than ever before. We have a lot ahead coming up. Still at 11, a setback in the fight against the coronavirus crisis. Governor Cuomo responding to concerns now that these protests we're seeing could prompt another wave. And we're staying on top of breaking news in Manhattan. At least 200 arrests and more anticipated a response to what police called organized mayhem. We're seeing this video here outside of Macy's. Minutes away, new video showing looting inside this historic department store. No, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. All right, taking a look at some new video just into our newsroom that appears to show people running away from Macy's, their main department store in Herald Square, after NYPD officers responded to reports of looting. Again, watching this raw video here of people running away from Macy's also reports that those looters set fires inside the store. Trying to get some more information as we're seeing this new video tonight. The Empire State Building is dark tonight to recognize the, quote, tragic murder of George Floyd, injustice in all its forms and its victims. The owners of the Midtown Skyscraper are now calling for an end to the damage done to New York City and its people, saying, quote, there is enough loss and sorrow already. Well, this next story, the video I've been seeing all over social media tonight, he is the highest ranking uniform member of the NYPD. And tonight, he took a knee in an emotional show of support for protesters, Stefan. But first, Natalie, Chief of Department Terrence Monahan made an impassioned plea for protesters to not let outsiders destroy their city. There's the chief on the scene of a protest in Washington Square Park this evening when some in the crowd started throwing bottles at police officers. One of the organizers of this peaceful protest approached Monaghan with a PA system, asked him to address the crowd. You see there a visibly emotional chief taking a knee and hugging demonstrators there in the park. Afterwards, Monaghan said it was appropriate to show solidarity there. What a moment to see. And now we're going to take a moment to talk about the weather and some uh, much warmer temperatures coming our way. Yeah, Storm Team 4 meteorologist Janice Huff tracking the warm up. Hey, Janice. Hi, Natalie. Hi, Stefan. A big warm up coming up after today. It felt like fall in the air with temperatures in the 30s and 40s this morning, but we're going to jump to summer in just a matter of about uh, 36 hours where temperatures will be up in the 80s, feeling like 90, but not tonight. Live at the Brooklyn Bridge right now, which is very quiet. Uh, clouds are overhead, 62 degrees in the city. Some of the outlying temperatures, though, are in the 50s right now. Uh, with those clouds, the temperatures may, may not be quite as chilly as last night. We had a couple of sprinkles over the Hudson Valley, parts of Connecticut. We can see on live storm tracker four, a few are left over well to our north and west and also a cluster of showers now moving through Michigan and parts of the Great Lakes. We should stay dry around here until we get to Tuesday night and particularly on Wednesday afternoon. There's a cold front coming that's going to bring thunderstorms, possibly severe weather to the area by Wednesday afternoon. So we'll track it for you now. First, we'll start with tonight into tomorrow morning. Looks like it stays pretty quiet, but those high clouds will still be overhead and temperatures by 6 a.m. will be mainly in the 50s with a few 40s off to the north and west. A sprinkle here and there, a couple of raindrops, not out of the question north and west in the morning, but it stays dry but mostly cloudy all day. Despite the cloud cover, we still expect temperatures into the 70s by the afternoon, so a little bit warmer than what we saw today. And then we get to Wednesday afternoon and that's when the chance of severe weather comes with possibly lightning, destructive winds, damaging hail. Meantime, in the tropics, we have Tropical Depression 3, 
Today was the start of the hurricane season, but this is the third storm that we've seen here, this third uh, system. It doesn't have a name yet because it hasn't strengthened to that, but it's just to the west of Cancun. They're going to get a lot of rain down there over the next couple of days because that system is going to sort of meander and sort of hang out down there. Uh, so maybe upwards of maybe a foot of rainfall in parts of Mexico. And then this weekend, it gets out into the Gulf of Mexico, and then we have to really watch it because then it could strengthen to a tropical storm and threaten the Gulf Coast coast with the name Cristobal. So we'll be watching that carefully. Meanwhile, we're watching this, the big warm up in our exclusive 10 day forecast. 87 by Wednesday will feel like the 90s. Still warm and muggy Thursday, Friday with a few storms. By Sunday, we're drying out. We're in the 70s. Back to you. All right, Janice, thanks. And we'll be right back. New York City is still at least a week away from taking its first steps down the road to recovery. But as we wait for the go ahead to enter phase one, two more New York regions have already gotten the green light to enter phase two. Western New York moves forward tomorrow. The capital region is just a day behind. The city is still shy of meeting two of the seven CDC metrics required to reopen. It's 1% away from the required number of hospital beds available, uh, hospital beds available and is ex expected to soon meet that required number of contact tracers. Today, Mayor de Blasio and Governor Cuomo expressed their concerns that the crowds of protesters crowding through the city could lead to a resurgence of coronavirus cases. Just don't snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. How much are you concerned that there will be a rise in COVID cases as a result of all of these crowds? I am very worried about the health impact to the core of your question. I would urge everyone to think about this. News Force Andrew Siff also asked the state's health commissioner about a potential spike in cases. He said the state of New York is going to keep an eye on it. New Yorkers will have to wait until a little bit closer to the new year to see the Metropolitan Opera perform again. All shows that were scheduled for the fall have now been canceled because of the pandemic. The Met Opera says its new season will begin on New Year's Eve with a special gala performance. The Met's last show was in early March, making this the longest interruption of performances in more than a century. Well, New Jersey will enter phase two of reopening in two weeks. A lot of folks have been waiting to hear about a date. Now, June 15th, we know that some in-person retail and outdoor dining will be allowed. And child care services can open as well. On June 22nd, organized sports practices can resume. And on July 6th, youth day camps open. We are ready because our positivity rate, as you can see, keeps falling. We are ready because the data says so. And it's all because of you. Now, still no word on a date for gyms yet, but in no Newark, hundreds of businesses have applied to reopen, and the city is promising to act on those as fast as possible. Well, people in Connecticut were back out, finally able to get their hair cut today. It's because the barbershops and the hair salons reopened with safety measures in place. News 4 got a look inside the La Jolie Salon and Spa in Stamford. You see there were face masks and glasses, plexiglass partitions, social distancing, at least between the clients. And for now, Governor Lamont is limiting salons to 50% capacity there, Stefan. I can imagine it felt good to finally get a haircut. We'll be right back with Bruce Beck in sports. The Spectrum Sports Desk is brought to you by Spectrum Mobile. Go to SpectrumMobile.com today. All right, Bruce has the latest on the MLB Talks. Hey, Bruce. Hey, Natalie, Major League Baseball and the Players Union are running out of time to make a deal. The two sides continue to go back and forth on negotiations. Last night, the players proposed a 114-game schedule that would cover roughly 70% of their salaries on a prorated basis. That's been a sticking point for the players during these negotiations. Well, according to multiple reports tonight, MLB is now mulling the possibility of a smaller schedule such as 50 games if they are forced to make prorated payments to the players. So the posturing continues. Both sides seem to be at two extremes. The hope is they eventually meet somewhere in the middle. But the clock is ticking. Haggling over the number of games and money tonight seems tri trivial. But I think the Mets had the right focus today. In a statement, the team said, Queens, New York, is one of the most diverse areas in our country. We take pride in our diversity. This is why we denounce all forms of racism and discrimination. We stand with our state, our city, and community. 
We hope to be part of positive change in our society. Be strong and be safe, everyone. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Uh, before we take off tonight, here's a live look from Chopper 4 of a group of protesters marching peacefully in the Clinton Hill area of Brooklyn. I believe I've got the geography right. This is near Fulton and Vanderbilt. Uh, unlike the scenes we've been seeing in Manhattan tonight, we are not getting any reports of widespread looting or rioting in Brooklyn. What we're seeing is a largely peaceful gathering, even as this curfew is now in effect until 5 a.m. The hope is the violence is over and that the peaceful protests will prevail tonight. I want to take a second and head over to Storm Team 4 meteorologist Janice Hop. One last look at our weather, Janice. Hi, Natalie. We're going to go from feeling like fall today to feeling like the dog days of August by the time we get to Wednesday. Look at the highs, mid to upper 80s with uh, the heat index probably in the low 90s. We're also going to see some thunderstorms that day, possibly severe weather, uh, and a few storms going into the end of the week and into the weekend. Back to you. Okay, Janice, thank you very much. That'll do it for us. Jimmy Fallon's coming up next. Be safe, be well, have a peaceful night. Be careful, everybody. Today, New York starts at 4 a.m. Have a good night. We'll see you tomorrow.